Hi, welcome to Morning Talk. Uh, today is my conversation with Buck Angel. Buck is um, a lot of things. He's an entrepreneur. He's an adult film star. He is transgendered, and he's uh, of an age now where he calls himself a trandpa. Uh, so he's been uh, sort of in that space for a very long time and has a unique perspective. Um, but uh, the reason that I had Buck on on the show was that um, I just wanted to talk about the topic of masculinity. Um, and I know that someone like him has thought through masculinity um, in a very deep and kind of embodied way because um, he's super masculine, much more masculine than myself. And uh, also, though, because of being transgendered, he's had to kind of um, seriously consider um, the presentation of his gender uh, in public and seriously considered uh, as a life and death issue, you know, uh, presenting himself for, um, for how he is. So it, it was a wonderful conversation um, and I enjoyed it. I, I loved it. Um, I hope I get to talk to, uh, to Buck again. So here's the conversation with Buck Angel. Buck Hi. Angel, welcome to Morning yeah. Talk Show. <laughs> Right on. Thanks for having me, my friend. Right on. Uh, are you a morning person? No. <laughs> I have the worst uh, insomnia ever. It's so horrible. So, oh, really? Yeah, I'm not like the best in the morning. But coffee's already, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I mean, well, from what I know of you, though, you seem like one of those, like, get up and kick the day's ass kind of people. So uh, I am. That's, yeah. Insomnia will not keep me down. <laughs> no. I don't get that impression anyways, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I uh, usually start off by just saying uh, why I wanted to have someone on the show. Um, my show, it's, it's hard to describe my, I, I, have, I feel like it does have a point, but, but it's hard to describe. But one of the points I have is just trying to understand uh, human beings and understand the human condition in, in a way that kind of really transcends um, uh, really time-based kind of uh, political and, and hot button issues and messaging. Yeah. And one of the things I said a couple of times in episodes was, uh, and don't, don't take offense, I said, uh, I, I'm sort of envious of transgendered people mm -hmm. because they have had to um, consider their their, their, their gender, their masculinity, and, and how they want to express it. They've probably looked around more at icons of um, whatever gender they want to express and that kind of thing. And uh, jealous is not the right word, because I'm clearly not jealous of someone who's had to go through uh, what a transgender person goes through in, in 2020. But then I kind of realized, I'm like, okay, I've said this two or three times now on the show, and I've never sat down and talked with a transgendered person but then of course you don't want to just reach out oh i just contacted every transgendered person i could think of so i i took, <laughs> I took a while and I, I heard about you through contrapoints because i'm a fan of her and uh or uh, anyway her videos are very compelling and uh there was the controversy around your involvement in one of her videos and that kind of thing and and then so i looked you up and i was like okay i kind of felt like this is this is the person to, that i want to talk to because you're you're uh, such a generous conversationalist and and you're you really don't seem to mind um unpacking your history and and kind of you know, you want to you want to illuminate these things uh yes. for other people so um yes. what i what i want to have uh any there's nothing that's off the table to talk about but what i want to talk about is um masculinity and femininity and not necessarily come to to hard and fast definitions of what they are but just to just to sort of see what they are to you and what they might be to to other people so um if it's not too broad of a question what what's your what's your history of masculinity and what, what were your earliest thoughts on it and that kind of thing yeah so first i want to thank you for having that conversation and understanding that i'm the guy who does have conversation you know there's a new transgender community out there that doesn't necessarily want to have the conversation i come from a different space i also consider myself a transsexual person oh okay which we could get in, that in a whole other show right okay well, my, my, my connection is horrible huh no i i can hear you okay you you haven't you haven't stopped at all <laughs> okay so that being said, 
I grew up as a girl, but I always felt masculine. So the question really does resonate with me because my masculinity was always attached to this idea of being male. And so as you, as you know, or might not know, women can be masculine too, because masculinity is a, a sort of, to me, masculinity is more of a trait as opposed to sort of how you feel. Now, the next thing I'm going to say is how I feel as a man. <laughs> I can't necessarily answer what it means to be a man because your idea of being a man might be different than my idea of being a man, right? right. Yeah. But masculinity can now come in all forms as far as I'm concerned. And mm. so my masculinity for me was super hyper man. Like that's what I, as you see, I'm kind of a ma very yeah. masculine person. Yeah. And so that was because for myself, being born as a female, it just felt very foreign on some level. And what I felt was more masculine was my appearance had to, you know, I had to dress like a little boy. I had to only wear boy clothes. I had to be called the boy name. I had, that was masculinity for me. And that was the thing that actually made me feel the most happy. And today, how I feel more happy is because I, the world sees me as masculine. So there was a period of time where I didn't get to live as a boy or a man. And that was the worst time of my life because mm. I had to be in the female form and femininity, though I was not a female woman. So mm. I was still experiencing this masculine space, but as a woman. And so that was a very hard space to be in. That was actually my worst time of my life. Yeah. What, what era of, that, of your life was that? What ages? Yeah, so I'm 58 years old. I was born in 1962. So again, we didn't even have these conversations when I was growing up. It was just very natural that I was a boy. And I was a tomboy and everybody was totally cool about it. It was not what you see today where kids right. are, I'm trans and like everyone's scrambling to figure out what that means. No, those are just tomboys and people are playing with gender and you know, pretty much mo a lot of those kids are going to grow out of it. So mm. I, I really have an issue with what's happening in the trans community, how mm. we are sort of telling kids, yeah, okay, you're trans and how do we make you, you know, trans for the rest of your life and how do we give you hormone mm. blockers? And, you know, clearly it worked out for me, but that said, we need to talk about this identification mm. right. of masculinity and femininity because it means different to all of us. There is right. no structure on that. And that needs to be said, I think. Yeah. And, and I, I think that, uh, what I what what I hope to have is a, is is a conversation where uh, we can actually have the conversation that should be happening around just around dinner tables and things you know like uh, not an argument not a fight and I, what I really like and what I pull out of what you're saying uh, is that um, is is kind of an idea of of ev personal evolution um, and that um, you're not you're not a, uh, clearly you're not attacking any kind of of transitioning, uh, but you but you are you do have a an issue uh, as I would have with with the idea of people not being able to evolve their personality and evolve who they who they are. Yes, um, I have huge issues with that. Also, because you have a kid and I have a kid, pretty much the same age. We know how kids are. I actually live the experience every day. I'm not, and I was a trans kid on some level. I'm not just saying if a kid says they're trans, they're not trans. We need to understand our own people's own attachment to their masculinity and their femininity mm -hmm. and their gender. And an eight year old doesn't necessarily have that attachment 100% and could want to play around with things. And right. this is a healthy space to let your child play in. To me, again, my opinion, what is not a healthy space is to immediately push this child into this gender space and say, mm -hmm. well, if you think you're trans or whatever you think, let's just give you hormone blockers and push you to that. That, I'm telling you, I think that's disastrous on some level because mm -hmm. you're forcing, you know, even though the kid says it, kids say all kinds of things. Kids say I'm a dog. <laughs> kids, right. right? Kids say I'm yeah. a Minecraft character. I mean, right. come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> my intuition, yeah. My intuition about this uh, conversation is that, uh, it, is that we're actually dealing with um, concepts that our language can't encapsulate yet. And it's yeah. not... It's not a matter of specific words yeah. because we have words for this, but you know how like, you know, when, when you say certain words, they tie in with very deep knowledge and intuition that mm -hmm. has been passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. We don't have those words for this situation. That's you know, right. like I know indigenous people have uh, this two spirit notion. I don't that's know if right. you know about that, but that, that seems like a lot healthier um, mm -hmm. 
way because we're, we're actually scrambling. But the difficulty is that as, as grownups, the people running the world um, have this desire that is really frustrating to feel that we are the ones who grasp it. So that when yes. we're talking to the children, we're thinking, well, you don't understand this space yet, but we do understand this space yet. And there's not a lot of humility in that statement. That's you know, right. like, um, and I actually have a personal, uh, I don't know if you want to say faith, but I have a personal, uh, I'll say faith for lack of a better word, personal faith that we're moving into a future uh, where these things do, these, these harsh boundaries break down in a healthy and yeah. evolutionary way. Yeah. And our language, even if our language doesn't change, uh, from the, the terms we're using now, the concepts behind it will deepen and will grow yes. to where it's a more nuanced conversation. But uh, yeah, and, and I hope that's true. I mean, if I look at even even in my own life, like uh, I'll just get personal for myself, mm -hmm. it, I, as, a, as a guy, I, um, I'm not a man in the same way that I was a man. Uh, uh, 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, st I'm still using that same word, but it means an entirely different right. thing to me. And that's, it's kind of a postmodern idea, but it's, I think it's the way it's supposed to be. I'm not a married man in the same way I was married. You know, I'm a monot, like I'm personally a monogamous, straight, married man, but I'm not a monogamous, straight, married man in the same way as I was even when I got married. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's, that's just me. And I think that's, I think to, to move it over into the straight world for a minute, we have this really, um, the most toxic thing it, to me is not having a definition of masculinity or not having one. It's enforcing right. the definition of masculinity you had at right. a very specific phase in your life. Maybe that developmental phase when your dad told you what it was to be a man or your, or your mom, or, or all of society told you what it was to be a man. And so you just locked into that. Right. And I, I've just been very uncomfortable with that. Uh, uh, you know, kind of uncomfortable in my, in my own skin as a dude at times, uh, just feeling like, uh, uh, like I didn't quite fit, uh, especially the, the more I get into hyper-masculine situations and, and that kind of thing. So it's something that's, that's been on my mind for a long time. So I guess when, what were your first experiences of feeling like you weren't, uh, you weren't matching up with right. uh, society? But, but to, first to comment on that, which is a really great thing you said, and what I what I think as a man who actually got to choose my masculinity, I got to choose it. I got, I wasn't, you were born into it. And when you're born into it, you know, as you just said, there are rules and regulations on how to be a man, how to be a masculine man, how to, you know, there are so many rules for you that it breaks my heart on some level because I do think that there are problems with that and have caused a lot of problems in the world and in being a man. And people won't want to talk about this because white men, cisgender men are the yeah. enemy of the state. And they are not. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much all my friends are white cisgender dudes who yeah. love me, have no issue with me being a lady before and now being this. Right. And this is what I try to teach the world is that, you know, you can say anything about anything until you actually make the choice to experience it. Yeah. And we have this idea of man now. We have this idea of masculinity. Right. And again, going back to you had, to, you had to be born into it and you are literally told how to be a man. I, on the other level, got to choose it, which really makes it a much more, um, I think, enlightened space on some. I'm not to say that I'm more enlightened than you. but No, I get it. To, yeah, right. So, so I feel, I have always felt, masculine it's hard to say this because what again is masculinity but i always knew i was a guy there was no, my parents knew it everybody knew it. that's why they call me the boy name they i was just you know until puberty which is the story of all trans people puberty yeah. is the devil for us but, right. but as i got to sort of become this masculine person and make myself as masculine as a woman and that was to shield the world from me and that was to say you know i don't i want you to see me this way which is a very hard thing for a woman to do because they're still seeing a woman and I'm pushing back as a man. And so my choice to do that was not necessarily all the time a choice. It was mm. a necessity in, right. in a sense in order for me to walk the world comfortable. So, mm. yeah. 
Yeah. So you had choices in mm -hmm. more, uh, more in the aesthetic space of how you're going to show that. That's and right. I, but, but when I say that, I actually, um, I, I feel that the world of aesthetics is actually a deep world and a very psychological world. I feel yeah. like it ties into our subconscious way more yeah. directly. Like it has a main line to our subconscious more directly yeah. than these things like these, uh, like an ideology of what it means to be a man. That's right. That, that's a whole system. Whereas, right. you know, you see that beard and, you know, and, and those yep. muscles and those tattoos that goes straight to something deeper, that's which right. is kind of a weird thing. It's like surface, <laughs> but it's deeper at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you totally hit it on the head. It's like with anything, it's like with even paint, doing your car, everyone wants their car a very specific way or everyone wants their house because those are the things that you are actually physically attached. I am mentally and physically attached to this idea of myself. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're right. Part of it I chose, but the other part is literally instilled in my system. I would not be alive today if I could not live with this. And that's for real, 100%. I tried to mm -hmm. commit suicide a couple of times as a youngster and just mm -hmm. alcohol alcohol, drugs, and homeless, because I could not live. So it was, lit it was physically innately in my body that I could mm. not live looking and being seen as a female. Mm. Yeah. So as you look at society and this, this conversation that, that is being had in fits and starts and needs to be had, mm -hmm. um, what do you think, yeah. like, how do you think your life would have been different in kind of a future? Uh, this is maybe an impossible mm. question. I'm, just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to imagine a future in which you, you didn't have this healthy beginning where you were yeah. called, uh, you know, the name you wanted to be called and then yeah, hit a wall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so two questions, I guess, that come out of that, like what, like, what do you think your life would have been at puberty? And then also, do you think, uh, no, I don't, I won't ask you to speak for other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think your life would have been like at puberty if, if, if things had been healthy? So if I would have been, so, so there, that could go both ways. If I would have been just like grown out of being masculine and I went into being just a woman, cause there are a lot of people like that who felt masculine as kids and felt like little boys. That's why I said giving hormone blockers could be the worst thing we ever do because kids play with gender. There's a mm -hmm. lot of kids who felt masculine and I talk to those women all the time. They're like, well, I grew out of it and now I'm just kind of a masculine woman and I'm, you know, mm -hmm. this. So that being said, I think if I would have been, and I did become a masculine gay woman and that was like, so difficult for me because deep in my system, I didn't feel like mm. a woman. And I couldn't have that conversation. But if it would have been different, I would have had an uh, – or, or if I would have been born male, oh, my God, my whole, I wouldn't even be sitting here talking to you. I would have been something else. I would have mm. graduated high school. I would have gone on to college. I didn't have – I have no formal education. I, I was a mess. And mm. so because my brain was not really functioning with my body, which is a really difficult thing to people understand if mm. they don't have it. It's like saying you have cancer and trying to explain that to people or any kind of yeah. situation. <clears throat> you can't explain it to someone who doesn't have it. Right. And so especially gender because people are just so not understanding the whole sex and gender thing. Yeah. Except for I can say that my brain did not connect to my body. And imagine if you had to walk around the world today, my friend, as a woman, you would just be like, <laughs> this yeah. is not okay. I don't feel this yeah. good. good. Yeah. I mean, I've experienced uh, on a very, very much more mild level uh, dissonance between uh, what was supposed to be and and what was, you know, right. uh, about myself. And, and yeah. so uh, I, I can, you know, in the very, very smallest sense of the word, I understand what you're saying, but I mean, we have to acknowledge and treat people and, and mm -hmm. sort of cisgendered, is that the right word? Uh, people. I don't use that word. I just oh. say men and women. I'm a men. trans. Men. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. They're making it complicated for all of us. You're a man. I'm a transsexual man. Right. <laughs> We're actually different. We are yeah. men here but I have different needs than you. Right. And that's why I keep fighting against this idea that trans women are women and trans men are men. No, right. we're not. We are in the world, but we really have different needs. So, yeah. Well, I just mean like, yeah, for, for yeah. everybody, we need to look at each other with the sense of, I, I don't, yeah. I will never fully know uh, what, right. it, what it is like to be you. But, but I wouldn't fully know what it's like to be you. Exactly. Like we have full on different experiences. This is really so great because this is where we can come actually together. You as a man, as a born biological man and me as a man who, you know, had to make myself a man. How can we come and meet each other and start yeah. to have 
this is what we're doing now and it's so beautiful and amazing. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I'm really, really grateful for it. Um, one of the things that's come to my mind, sorry, my guests always stimulate all these thoughts and then I'm, <laughs> right I'm, I'm, on. I'm sorry. But one of the things, there's an insidious implication in, uh, in sort of the, the typical um, male, uh, well, okay, so a, a man who is um, uh, annoyed by the existence of trans, uh, transgender or transsexual people, uh, th- the subtle implication is there's two categories, men and women, and I understand the woman category, but it's like, mm-hmm. you know, th- that understanding is very toxic too, right? Like just as mm-hmm. I can't approach you and say, I know what it's like to be you, I can't approach a woman. I can't ac- right. approach my wife or my daughter okay. and say, and, and enforce what they need to be because mm-hmm. uh, I don't, do not know what they're seeing through their eyes. And That's so, right there's always that moment of backing up and allowing someone to just be, be who they are. And, and there's, I think one of the things that really annoys um, the anti-trans people Mm -hmm. is this idea that they don't understand the world. (laughs) And and, and honestly, and that's a, that's actually a, that's something I can actually have empathy for. Right. Uh It's because when people come up, uh, and say, look, uh, they're breaking down these categories that, that uh, then, then someone who, someone who really has taken comfort in their own understanding of the world is all of a sudden unmoored. They're That's in, right. they're in a different world. Yep. They're, they're seeing this other reality and they don't, uh, you know, and that is actually quite jarring. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, I, I do, I, I, it does sadden me that, that the conversation gets shut down from that side. Right. Uh, yeah. so often because I, uh, you know, I, I think we'll have better, uh, we'll have better uh, people all around when all everybody, around when everybody you, you, uh, is thinking about this. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's irresponsible. It's, and I'm going to say this, it's on both sides. It is not just the world attacking trans people. There is a faction of the transgender community now called TRAs that are really just pushing on people to accept them, to do these things. If you don't do that, you cannot change the world that way. I know because I've been doing this work forever. I travel the world. People have no issues with me being a transsexual man Mm. at all because I literally talk about it and I'm cool about it and we just have this and then literally no one talks about it anymore. So that being said, if you shut down on both sides, if you shut down conversations, you will never, ever, ever make it to that next level. And this is the frustrating part for a guy like me who really just wants us to coexist. People forget that word coexist. You cannot just run over a group of people and say, we're now going to take over this space and we're, because now people are going to fight you on that. Mm. Give up their space. They're not going to you're going to say, we welcome you, or how can we be this together? But you, you know, and that just, I think, is with anything in the world. You, when you come into it with a bulldoze attitude, guess what's going to come back? A bulldoze yeah, attitude. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's a struggle. It's a struggle not to use, like, now that, um, now that this, the voice of, of, of marginalized people in this area mm-hmm. um, is growing, it's a struggle not to use power, I think. It's a, That's it's a right. When, when, when you sense yep. that you've got some societal power and societal power has been used against you yep. so much, right it's on. very difficult to turn around, you know, like it's, uh-huh. it's, it's like being Jesus or something to turn around <laughs> and not use, that, uh, not use that against other people. That's but true. One of the things that's kind of coalescing in my brain as you're talking is um, just the idea of authority. Mm -hmm. Um, and authority has been considered a, um, a masculine trait, uh, from, you know, at least in the, in the West, I feel like the word authority, if someone were to start throwing out words associated with authority, uh, men, manliness would be on that list. Um, oh, you might be a little bit frozen here. Let me just wait. Am I frozen? Oh, there you are. Hi. Sorry, you were frozen. Um, so yes, sorry. Oh, bad. No. It seems to come in fits and starts, but so, it's, yeah, been, it's been really solid. Oh, yeah, yeah, authority. Yeah. Um, so what has been yeah. what has been your experience both with authority figures over yourself and then yourself as an authority figure? Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's a really so yeah, authority 
that's the thing I think that's actually messing everything up because authority is to me a very dominating space to be in. And what does that even mean to have authority? Right. So I, I, I don't like it because I don't want to be an authority and I'm not, I'm only authority on myself. And that's what people forget too. When we start having these very nuanced, what, where to happen to that? How come we can't just have conversations that, so uh, I do, understand that sometimes it's important to have authority because it sort of pushes, I think, things in a direction. But mm. then I think what happens is people, power, right? I think power is attached to authority. And power is a very dangerous space to be in because then you start to feel this power. And I'll be honest with you, there's times I feel powerful when I'm tweeting something or I'm doing it and people are like, yeah, this is, it gives you a really sense of, a false sense of power because that's yeah. false. And, um, so I think that the word authority and power go together in a sense that they are not positive. They are not a positive space to mm. let, you know, because I think authority to me says shutting down conversation and not mm. allowing us to have right. this idea of nuanced conversation or understanding that we have different spaces. Right. Right. I mean, that's yeah. just kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah. Right. I, I hear you. And I, I agree. Like authority is, is a very hollow thing when it becomes about, um, uh, uh, pushing yourself out into the world and, yeah. and forcing yourself upon other people. Authority is right. kind of this thing that's only healthy when it, when it involves kind of faith in a, in a greater uh, yes. movement and the, and the potential yes. of a group of people. Right. And that's, that's yes. the thing when you, when you have authority over people, your biggest, mm -hmm. uh, your biggest resource is the potential of those people. you it's not, that's your right. It's not your own, your, re, your resource is not your own self. It's what everybody else brings to that, that table. And, right. and I wonder if you can relate to this as a dad, because I have found that with my kids, um, I, this authority figure will come out sometimes. <laughs> and and it's, the, it's the one who draws a line, a kind of an arbitrary <laughs> line in the sand and says, now don't do that again or, <laughs> or else. You know, and, and yeah. it's just, a, you know, no reason, just uh, yeah. right. And, and of course, parenting is one of those things that brings you face to face <laughs> with your own crap, you know, uh, <laughs> and, so and, uh, and it's just kind of, it's kind of come to my mind recently, just how hollow that authority really is. You know, mm -hmm. you want, you want, the, you want people to believe in, in your, in, in who you are. You want them to do the things that, that are, are right for them. And, and you, you authority should should lead people towards doing what is right for for themselves and for others but right. i don't know has that been has that been your of course of course and also because i do believe as a parent you are in a space to teach and also be you know i'm a guy who does believe in um discipline on some level and that it helps kids. I think kids without discipline we're seeing today on the internet and there's a lot of them. And so I, I do think authority in that space, you can miss, it can be misguided or it can, it just depends on what you mm. as a parent. And I think we are losing this. I, I, parents aren't being given this. I don't want to use the word power, but I think on, and I know this specifically in the trans community, we are giving parents less power over their children to make these choices about mm. who they are, which on some level is great, but on some level it's bad when you start to right. disengage your parents, right. the parents from you know we, imp disempowering them because parents are yeah. there for a reason. We right. do have a responsibility, but then again, right, when I yell at my kid because he did something bad, I'm like, I actually hate it when I do that, but it, that's that part that comes out of me that's a frustration, and I think that's a human thing. I don't necessarily think it has anything to do with yeah. masculinity or femininity but right. but that but that's that said true. i think as parents we have a responsibility and you know again that's just my own thought it doesn't necessarily right. mean it's right some people homeschool their kids and let their kids do all kinds of stuff and that's great they might be amazing people when they grow up but um, yeah that that what that issue you're talking about is definitely the most complicated yes. uh the most complicated part of the the life of a, of a person, well, yeah, of any kind of a trans or gay person, mm -hmm. or or even or even straight people who uh, who don't you know don't conform to something because yeah you know that's that's the the big huge question mark is if if authority is so. Uh, um, 
pervertible. You know what I mean? That's uh-huh. not, I, I don't want to use the word perversion because I don't want to bring that shade into the conversation. But <laughs> uh, if, if authority is, is so co-optable by negative intention, um, yeah. how do you make this conversation um, that this global, universal, every human being conversation about gender, um, like... <laughs> I don't know exactly how to say what I'm trying to say, but how do you, how do you kind of take the, make it as healthy as it can be? How do you, how do you make it so that um, parents are, are actually looking with a, with a, a loving eye at their children as, as to who is my child and, and helping them uncover who that, who they are as children? Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you change? I mean, it's really the, the, the parents who need, who need changing, more yeah. than than the kids because the kids are going through this really honest that's right struggle they they don't that's have right. as much as someone can have not have an ideology they don't have an ideology that's right um they that's are right. literally just like you know these things are still magical like i remember mm-hmm. as a kid certain kind of paragons of femininity to me would be like uh we lived in the southern us and there would be these old women um I mean, I don't want to bring race into it. There would be these old black women who were like just magical to me. You know, you're not, you're not think you're not, you're not picking apart anything about them there. You see them as a whole. And it made perfect sense in the matrix when the Oracle was uh, an, <laughs> an older black lady to me because That's they right. have that, uh, that uh, oracular or whatever. Uh, it's true. Vibe. And, and yes. as a kid, I mean, that's just one example as a kid of me seeing something. Uh-huh maybe through the veil of any kind of um, preconceptions about someone and just, mm-hmm. and, and, and it, but it was true of, of all kinds of, of other types of people too. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, this isn't even a question. I'm just sort of riffing on this idea of, of how children view the world as this magical space. Right. Um, and uh, I mean, which we is to, important. We yeah. it's look, Again, I'm going to go back to kids who are trans. We also have to realize that the internet is here now and it is very influential in a lot of youngsters' lives and especially now during COVID because Mm. now we have more kids at home, more kids need to be entertained because parents have to do things. There is a lot of stuff on the internet. I'm sure you know as a parent and I know. That being said, if you don't think kids can sort of see things and want to be a part of that, then you're not paying attention to kids because right. kids do get excited about belonging to Minecraft characters or whatever their doom or whatever they're playing mm-hmm. on there. They all do. And, he, and, and so that's, I talk about this idea that trans is a real thing. It is. There's definitely trans kids, but I also talk about this thing of identity and trans has become an identity. It is not where I come from, which is saying that I felt like a boy my whole life. I want to be what I, I basically had what we don't call it anymore is a sex change. And that was always because I felt like a boy. I always wanted to be a boy. I never wanted to be trans. I didn't even know what that was. Mm. So flip to today I and I see a young, youngster saying I'm trans. And so that's the thing that I immediately go, wait a minute, what does that even mean? I'm trans and it needs an identity and all kids want to be a part of something. All kids want, you know, like I'm going to say, I, I wanted to be part of punk rock. That was where I landed. That's important to me because it was a space of angst and uh, I could just get myself out and I could be a weirdo. And so, but that wasn't who I was. It was who I, who I felt in this space. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get it now. I didn't know what you meant at first, but yeah. Okay. So trans is an identity. Um, Yes. That, that, that makes sense. And, and like, it's, it's good and bad, right? Because yes, uh, the, uh, like kids really do live in a liminal space between yes. things like they, they, nobody corresponds to the, po- to the polar extremes. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's right. Um, that's right. What, what you're saying, if I could, if, if, if I can take a stab at it is that, mm-hmm. um, that the term trans has actually locked people into uh, a space of being undefined in a that's way. Right. And, and, and that's something that I've noticed it, it, well beyond this conversation is that one of the more toxic things, it, I mean, someone discovering what they are is, is mm-hmm. wonderful. Someone being locked in where they that's are right. based on a requirement uh, or a feeling of requirement mm-hmm. is is not good. And man, I mean, you basically would need a, a, a generation of trained psychologists 
to uh, <laughs> see either you get yeah to, to sort of uh, to sort of understand when one is happening or when the other is happening. Or, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's so hard to know. And I know that I've been locked into definitions of myself mm -hmm. and how real that can be. I mean, just to back up like a little personal information about myself is that I come from a Southern Baptist background mm -hmm. and my dad's a, a pastor and mm -hmm. who incidentally was not uh, thank God. Uh, uh, an, an Uber man did not enforce, like he, he's an artistic guy. He cries. Uh, mm. and that was, that was really good for, for me. But, um, but in terms of religious faith, um, I had this definition of myself that I just was unquestioned from when I was, was young and it was causing me a lot of the things about it were causing me that just, um, like a, a fog in my mind. Sure. Uh, I don't know if you can relate to that, but like, uh, yeah. just like a, just always feeling, in a bit of a fog uh, yeah. and the clarity, the clarity on certain issues um, was just not there. Uh, and then, and then as I kind of, I had to question that, uh, I had to question that definition at some point, but kind of being, being brought to the, to the place of being forced to consider that question mm -hmm. was very uh, formational. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, if I had, I don't know if I'd been locked into something early on of like, uh, Oh, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't know how to describe what I'm saying. I'm trying to relate this to, to the, to, to what, what you're discovering. Cause you never know. Someone can say they're this mm -hmm. and they can, and, and they don't even know themselves what they, where they really are, how internalized that is, how, how real that is, how much of it's linked to a sense of community and how much of it is their own identity. And I guess I'm not really asking a question so much as just reflecting on, mm -hmm. on, on what you're saying. Um, but no, but it makes sense. And again, your experience and my experience are going to be different. Yet here we are as men, right? Mm -hmm. So again, these are the conversations that are, but I love that you said that about your dad, that I came from the opposite space. My dad was super macho, ex-football player, very masculine. And that's really where I got my idea mm -hmm. of masculinity. I always say it all the time. I was literally sort of indoctrinated into this idea of masculinity that oh, was hyper-masculine. Yeah. And I know yes. that 100% comes from my father. And so, and so your father was hyper-masculine and mm -hmm. yet um, completely allowed you to identify as in, in a male yes. way. So that's yes. a really unusual, your, your dad had a really unusual combination of traits there. Oh my God. So, so my dad, because my parents thought I would grow out of it. My mom was always like, nope, that's my son. But my dad always thought I would grow out of it. And so when okay. I became a gay woman, oh, he hated it because he's okay. that stereotypical man, white man, right. macho football player, hates gays, like that kind of thing, right? So that was a whole other level. Then when I became his son, oh my God, that was a whole other level. <laughs> he could not handle it. Uh -oh. Today, my, my dad and I are like, this we are so close because i gave him the time and and space yeah. to lose his daughter he lost his daughter and this yeah. is the thing people don't really talk about i was his yeah. daughter for 20 30 years and then i became his son and i had to give my father time to you know i didn't i didn't bulldoze him and say you better call me your son you know he would call me his daughter on certain and i'm like dad people are going to start thinking you're nuts look at me <laughs> 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 so, you know, I would make jokes and we would sort of smooth into that. And, you know, I, I, and this is all my lived experience of how I know how people have become, even my own family, how they become so chill with me and everyone. It's, a, I have actual lived experience and how I got people to accept me. Yeah. And it is true. You cannot push on people. Some people will accept you. Some will not. And for whatever that means, yeah. and you have to always understand that in your brain, you cannot change the way people, you can give them the information. You can give them the tools, but if they choose yeah. not to do it, you cannot take that on. Well, you've evolved and you've, you've allowed uh, your family space to evolve, um, which is what, I mean, allowing your family members space to evolve is exactly what needs to happen for young trans kids, right? That's so right. you're, you're actually living out the that's ideal, right. but kind of on the up other side of the spectrum. So Right, right. Yeah. And that's what I don't look. So we have this thing called detransitioners. These are people who thought they were trans and literally went through mostly women to men like me and cut their breasts off at 20 years old at, you know, 19 or 18, cut their breasts off, even had hysterectomies, took testosterone, grew mustache, and then decided, uh-oh, I'm actually not really this. And I'm actually mm. really a woman. Can you imagine 
This is what I'm trying to prevent. If we don't start to talk about this with young children and we just start giving them hormone blockers, you don't think there's going to be a mass. There is. I'm telling you, as someone who has lived experience of this way, it is really detrimental that we have a conversation and stopping pushing people to sort of be this way because it makes mm. us feel better. That's really what it is. Because when mm. people say to me, are you going to get the rest of your transition? And I'm like, well, look, I'm pretty done. They're like, well, what about the penis? And I'm like, yeah. what about the penis? <laughs> it's, it's just not part of my life. And they're like, well, then you haven't had a full sex change. I'm like, well, actually I have. And actually I am this guy because I realized that's the part that makes people uncomfortable. Mm. It's uncomfortable with me is the fact that I don't have a penis. And that's not about me. I'm totally comfortable with it. Right. But people are so uncomfortable. And so that's when I kind of see with kids, they're like uncomfortable with this idea of kids fitting between space. And they want to push you into this space again. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's only unhealthy when it becomes the same thing that was done that's right to them and, and yeah right. the, i definitely see this and you know uh i i guess this particular fight is uh, i mean the the fight in the transgender space mm -hmm. is uh is something that i i i kind of hope does uh kind of cool off in it in will the and it i will. i would like that I, and my show is definitely not intended to be one of these hot button uh, topic no. shows. And, and it's not because I, uh, it, it's because there's that, that's being covered. Like that, com that yeah. part of the conversation right. is being covered. And right. so what I really appreciate and the reason I wanted to have you on versus some other people that might've mm -hmm. been able to is mm -hmm. it, it's just that ability to, um, to kind of relate and to to say that these concepts and these principles that are being yeah. talked about or or pushed away are universal and they're involved That's in a lot right. of conversations and there are a lot of people who there are a lot of people who die alone in their own suffering who never yeah. were a part of any of this conversation who aren't That's trans right. who who whatever like and and so i guess there's the idea of uh one of the one of the masculine ideas that um I think needs to evolve big time is the idea of male suffering of, yes. of the suffering of men. Yes. Uh, and, and it's something that isn't um, talked about a lot. There's a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, there, there's a lot of men who present as pretty together until the day that they are just found dead. I know. And I, I, and I, I, I've recently had the, the wonderful opportunity to hear a bunch of older people uh, talk about their, the suffering in their lives. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, a, I won't get into it, but um, it was everything from, as far as I know, they were all straight. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it was everything from sexual abuse to the death of a dog mm -hmm. uh, and, wow. and everything in between, even down to, um, a single comment that was made about one particular woman when she was young that affected her self image to this day. So everything from an individual comment to full on sexual abuse and in their sixties and seventies, these people, these were their, these were their sufferings. These were the things that were on their mind. And so that's, that's one of the things that um, the male mind wants to rank these things. Right. Mm -hmm. And yep. wants to say, okay, that comment, that's bullshit. Uh, mm -hmm. Get over it. You know, like that's, <laughs> that's, that's what, to, to, to some people, that's exactly what masculinity is. <laughs> that's it, true. It doesn't matter if that's still on your mind 35 years later, 50 <laughs> years later, just man up. Yep. That's yep. nothing. We've yep. categorized suffering into this point. Okay. So maybe, maybe if you're, if you were sexually assaulted, okay, fine. That's a legitimate one. You know, mm -hmm. so we want to rank all of these sufferings down. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think you can do that because just as, just as I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what it's like to be you and I never mm -hmm. will. And that's a beautiful thing. That's why we have to have conversations. That's right. You don't know what a nuclear bomb is for someone else's psychology, right. for someone else's brain. You yeah. don't know. And it could be anything. So you have to be vigilant. It's not just about like, you know, a parent could be a hundred percent right in the way they deal with a, a transgendered kid or a transsexual kid mm -hmm. or gender dysphoria or whatever, and still drop an atomic bomb in that right. little person's 
soul, you know, or in their, in their psychology. And that's kind of, that's kind of the, the purpose of, of this show is to, to help understand uh, the human experience so that we see uh-huh. the mystery. So that when I look at you, you are a mystery, but you're a beautiful mystery. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're a, mis- you're a mystery that's worth that's right. uncovering. Yeah, you know, right you're, you know, you're a, you're a, a great unexplored territory Excellent. that has gold in it, you know, and that has, yes. and, and I am. And, and, yes. and so I need to see me as I've got gold for you. You've got gold for That's me. That's right. That's if somebody, humanity. If somebody's That's... willing, like when you, when you, sorry, sorry, I'm interrupting you. No, no, no. I'm just, I interrupted you. But that being said, that what you're saying right now is the crux of humanity. And when we have to start to look at people as people, now gender and all yes. that's always going to exist. And I'm, I'm actually about gender. But that being said, we have this idea that just because I see you right now sitting there as a white man, you are this, you know, the white man is the bad person now. Yeah. And so now we are putting, when you start to instill these ideas that are so negative, then people just immediately, oh, that black person over there, oh, that Asian person, we've instilled these ideas instead of saying, but wait a minute, we're actually individuals. I don't yeah. care if you were raised as, you know, a Korean, whatever, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you actually don't have your own way of doing things. We've gotten yeah. into such this idea that men are this way, women are this way. And that is so not true. What you're saying is so important. We got to go to individuality and mm-hmm. everyone has their own story, their own idea, how they are. We're not yeah. all the same because we're trans and we're not all the same because we're white men and we're not all the same because yeah. we're, that's a very dangerous yeah. space to go into. Yeah. Uh, and a conversation is so important because yes. when, when we are, when, when we are exploring each other, like there is, there's mutual learning, right? So if I, so in this conversation, my goal is to say, let's explore the territory of Buck Angel. We're going in there and, and, and you, you know, the territory, but there's still the potential that, you know, when, when we're exploring the the territory, you see something new in, in right? That's right. Only because of inviting people in. So there needs to be a flexibility of, a flexibility of identity um, in the, in all the best conversations there's yes. a flexibility of identity and it says yes. look I'm, I'm coming to your territory and i brought my gear but some of my yeah. gear is not suited to this territory so yeah. give me some of your gear Excellent. you know what i mean like oh we're in mountainous terrain now Can, yeah. you know let me borrow let me borrow your <laughs> self-exploration apparatus that's brilliant or something that's exactly right because that's sharing ideas and sharing you know again let's go back to masculinity i mean some people were told not to cry as men and that is a very big problem in the male world and i see it all the time i'm a big cry baby when i speak to all these <laughs> i speak in front of hundreds of men and they're like i have them crying <laughs> and they're like it's the first time i ever cried publicly i'm like oh my god yay that's so amazing this yeah. i so that's just one little that little thing that i dislike about this idea of masculinity that we can't be sensitive as men and we can't be and that's feminine but we're we were starting to break those walls down but by having these conversations and giving men space giving yeah. men space to say it is okay to be this way when we you know we're always beating down certain groups of people as if they're all the same and we do it with all groups of people but mm. in, we have to get back to this idea of individuality within even groups of people. Communities are built by individuals. They're not built by we're all the same. That's a cult. Yeah. That's different. Right. And so, yeah, so this idea of masculinity is such a great conversation because we have to start getting rid of the, that. I hate this word, but I'm going to use it. Toxic mm. idea of how it is to be a man. And yeah. you know, it, there is no way to be a man. There just isn't. There's a way to be a person. <laughs> and, it, and then again, what is masculinity? That's just a, a word. That's a, that's a definition we put on an, a, an expression. Mm. So that's all. We could rename it to whatever we want to rename it to, and it could still mm. be that thing. It's just this idea of masculinity needs to be changed, and it needs yeah. to make it a more fluid space. I agree. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's, I mean, that's, it's good to hear that from someone who's ostensibly more manly than I am. (laughs) (laughs) See what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) So uh, quick, another question though, uh, about, about being a parent. Um, Did you find that, uh, sorry, and and how many kids do you have? Just one, eight year old boy. Eight year old boy. Did you, do you find that uh, he has uh, kind of forced you to question and change your, 
views of masculinity or, or yeah. of fatherhood yes. and that kind of thing. A fatherhood, mostly of masculinity because I'm, a, I'm around him. So he sees masculinity in me. And then what does that mean to be a man? And I don't want to give off that angry, toxic man shit like that, that people think of men about. I want to give off a loving, beautiful, awesome maleness to him. So I am very conscious around what he sees in me. And at, at face value, you know, I look very male and a very masculine and very macho. And he loves that because it's all into those boy games and stuff. Mm. But at the same time, he has seen me cry and he sees me hug his mom and he sees me tell her I love her all the time. And, you know, just this more sensitive spot, space in me and that it's okay when he cries and he falls down. It's okay, dude, cry. Yeah. You know, I, I do. I'm very sensitive and um, conscious of the way he sees masculinity. Mm, yeah, that's good. And yeah. I, uh, I feel like parenthood is one of the reasons I don't recommend it to people if they're not sure Mm -hmm. is that it, it kind of comes with an, uh, either this disillusioning of, uh, at least for me, this is how it's been, a disillusionment of uh, what it meant to be a dad, what it meant to be a, a, a man, mm -hmm. and then kind of a necessity to, re to question and then rebuild my, my view of masculinity. Uh, yeah. Or people double down. You know, yeah. uh, people go, well, you, you don't question me. I've got to show you a strong exterior. Oh. I've got to show you the, right. the metal casing that is being a man. Right. Yeah. And so I, I've wrestled with this because actually um, I have felt more of a pull to be um, to, towards some masculine traits in being a father. I have felt like, Oh, actually I kind of want to be a man. Like I, I want him to see me. I mean, everything I'm going to say would sound superficial, but I want him to see me kind of taking, taking responsibility for uh, build, building things, tearing things down, uh -huh. uh, you know, um, uh, survival skills or that kind of thing. Like as silly as that, as silly as that sounds, I'm like, oh, I, you know, I want him to have a well-rounded view of what yeah. a man can be. That's more right. About, more about the potential of what a man can be than the potential of what a man just is. Um, Right. And those things to me are important too. the attachment to masculinity and the attachment to maleness. I also don't want to give him this idea that being a man is toxic or being, a, you know, which I hear a lot out there. Mm. That's not true. What you're just saying, like those kinds of things are mm. important to me also as my masculinity. Right. And if, and by nature, he goes towards that i'm not yeah. pushing him. by nature he wants legos right. and he wants to build these crazy monster trucks and you know he wants to do all and to me that's yeah. masculinity now as right. a child as a girl that's what i did my right. parents only bought me gi joes they only bought me tonka trucks they only bought me mm. everything that was masculine right because that's what i gravitated to yeah. so same right. with him he's gravitating towards these masculine things and right. i encourage that because i think it's healthy it's not right I'm not encouraging him to, I'm not pushing him into another direction, if that makes sense. Right. Like yeah, you need yeah, to play yeah. with girl toys because it'll make you a more sensitive guy. Right. No, you can't, kids right. are innately, that, that's the thing. I think masculinity and maleness on some level is innate, but it right. doesn't mean because you're a girl, you can't do that, right? Right. right. So, yeah. I think, I, think, I think what we would find, this is just my suspicion, uh, is that if we were to um, just go with what our kids naturally want and and like in, in easy for me yeah. in my case because my kids have i mean there there's some there's some deviation from it but they've been pretty pretty typical uh but to just go with what their kids do i i, I wonder I, I think a lot i think we would find that a lot of people do just just turn out uh you know in the typical way but then a lot of yep. people would turn out a different way and uh, but yep. i don't know i don't know how to just describe what I'm well, saying. Well, it's getting deep. I mean, there's a lot of d deep stuff around gender and around, you know, there's an experiment that this doctor did in like the fifties with a child that got circumcised and the child was a, was a twin and they were boys and he cir the circumcision went wrong and it literally burned his penis off and he made this little boy into a girl because he was trying to do an experiment. Is it mm. nature or nurture? Right. And so that experiment is very famous and the kid grew up as a girl, even though he was born a boy. And he always felt like a boy and he knew mm. something was wrong, even though they told him he was a girl mm. and they were giving him hormones. He eventually ended up committing suicide mm. because he knew that he was not a girl. Yeah. He was a boy. And it's right. a very, so, so again, pushing some child into a space that's not, I think you, you, to me, I just watch my kid. I just watch to see how they are. How are they? I don't push them in any direction. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I, and I think that's the way. That's the way to go. Honestly, like it uh, is. <laughs> I, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything that could change my my mind in in the idea that you know you get to know who they are and yeah. you you course correct when they ex- exhibit toxic yeah. traits when that's and right. if they exhibit toxic traits. You know, mm-hmm. it's like uh, the the idea of toxic masculinity or some people talk about toxic femininity. I mean, right. they're 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 real things in that there is a shade of toxicity that is more common with that's right men. um but uh, back to the identity thing if 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 masculinity itself is portrayed as only toxic but isn't any better defined than it is right now it it yeah. is very difficult for yeah. um for young men to to know what that that's why it's dangerous behavior when we start saying masculinity is toxic or this way is, you know, we have a billion dudes out there, white, straight dudes out there. And when we start putting this message that being a white, straight dude is taught, that is not okay. I am not okay with mm-hmm. that because then kids, young people start to hear that when you start being uh, told that you're a bad person, bad things yeah. come from that. And instead of saying, well, how do we make this so that the newer generation does doesn't come up this yeah. way or how do we start to retrain this idea around that's why i don't like those labels and i don't like this idea that you know men are bad or yeah. this is like you know you can't do that you got you wouldn't do that to your dog you wouldn't just spank your dog and go in the corner <laughs> and not try to fix the problem yeah. they peeing in the corner like let's figure out why they're yeah. peeing in the corner right yeah and <laughs> i mean i've heard it said that the most dangerous people are weak people mm. uh, and you know are, are internally weak people mm. and when and weak internal weakness comes from a lack of self understanding that's right and so it you right. the, it there are a lot of toxic uh men yeah. out there and so yeah. num- number one you know we we need them we need them to feel that that the, the possibility of being understood exists yes you know? <laughs> and yes. then we and then we also <laughs> need to not poke the poke the bear in a way you know like, like <laughs> bear is there whether you poke it or not that's right <laughs> so, it's so i don't stupid. know yeah it's we- like, you know, there's easy ways to make things start to work look what i did to myself i was literally born a woman and i i like physically changed all that and became so I mean, I have the most amazing life. I can't even believe it. I would have never thought that this, I would thought I would be dead by now. And mm. that's because I listened to myself and I actually love myself. And I actually tried to make it so that I could be part of this world. And I learn from everything I do. And then I say, now I know a lot of things that a lot of other people don't know. I lived as a woman half my life and now I mm. live as a man. And so being in these two different spaces, masculine and feminine work together. Mm. They actually work together if you understand those. And you, yeah. have, you have it too. You just haven't been able to be able to tap into that because you're told not to tap into that. Right. And I like that you bring up self-love because it's something that I kind of wonder, uh, I, I kind of wonder if love isn't kind of an inherently uh, flexible thing. Mm. Where like I, I don't think love is masculine or feminine. So right. you can be whatever type of of man you are, and if yeah. you have self love, then there's always going to be this softer, more flexible part, right. right? Because you know, love without that kind of flexibility and that mm. that uh, empathy for yourself and for others right is not love. It's a it's a weapon. It's a it's That's a right. thing. It's a thing to enforce. So, um, and that's maybe the biggest tragedy of masculinity is that self-love is not really, um, is not really a thing, flexible self-love. There's, that's there's, right. there's self-image and then there's, there's sort of arming yourself with the, the weapons of masculinity. But, you know, maybe that's, maybe, maybe like self-love is a thing that, that transcends well, once anything. you learn it, and it's a difficult space to learn because we're not taught to love ourselves. We're taught to put this appearance out there, what you just said, this masculine thing. You don't think dudes, I mean, you, 
want to cry. They want to feel love. They want to feel it's a human. That's a human thing. That has nothing to do with male mm-hmm. or female. And yeah. we are actually depriving men of this idea of being able to experience the things right. women get to experience yeah. because it's not maleness. And I'm like, right. wow, <laughs> I have become the best man I can be because I tapped into yeah. my last part of my life. Right which a lot of us are told not to, or sort of to disconnect from that, never talk about it. You were never, you know, and I'm like, I disagree with that because I was literally put into that space. You know, I'm also a very spiritual person and I believe I was given that gift. I believe it as a gift now. Was mm. Never did I think of it as a gift. I always thought about, shit, this sucks. I was born a, a lady. And I, but that has been a mm. gift for me and it took me years and of age and of maturity. I, I realized being born a woman was a gift because I get mm. to see world in a way that is not a lot of men get to see and i get to be a teacher on some level right wow well uh, i mean that's 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 great and i mean i I feel like i could talk to you all day but yeah i know we can (laughs) that might be that might be a good place to to end it um because it seems like a nice way to wrap it up and it's from your own um in your own words and from your own perspective so um thank you so much for um being on the show and uh I don't know. Yeah. It's one of those conversations where I feel like it'd be great to talk again in the future. We won't make any requirements of that. No, we will. We will. I love talking to you. You're great. And I really appreciate you you bringing me on to talk about this because we need to start the conversations and then that that's how we actually make the world a better place. Well, thank you, Buck. Uh, So um, yeah, thanks a lot. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you later. You too. Right on. 